imagine what my goldfish would say if he really could talk? I think he would say, Hey, I'm bored in this little bowl. Why don't you get me a bigger tank with more fish in it? I would like to have some friends to swim around with. I went out and bought a bigger tank for my goldfish. I put some plants at the bottom of the tank, and I got a miniature deep-sea diver to put at the bottom of the tank. I looked into the tank and imagined what my goldfish was saying. He seemed to be saying, This is a nice tank. It's roomy in here, and you decorated it well. But I still don't have any friends to swim with. I went to the pet store and bought three more goldfish. I put them into the tank. All of the goldfish seemed to look at each other. They swam near each other and seemed to be playing games. I knew which one was my goldfish because he has a black spot on his fin. I looked at him and imagined that he was talking again. He said, This is great! I have a big new home and friends to swim with. These are nice goldfish that you brought home for me. Thank you! Goldfish can't really talk. I know that. I just like to pretend that my goldfish talks. He seems very happy now with his nice new home and his new friends. I don't think goldfish can smile either, but it looks like my goldfish has a smile on his face. The Best Teacher I have had a lot of teachers. Some of them were good and some of them were boring. There is one teacher whom I remember very well. He is the best teacher that I ever had. His name was Mr. Alden. He was a history teacher. History is not my favorite subject. I don't really enjoy history a lot. When I was in Mr. Alden's class, he made history seem exciting. He was more of an actor than a teacher. If he was describing a war, he would make us feel all the emotions that the soldiers and their families would have felt. We could almost hear the guns firing and the people shouting. He would paint a picture in our minds that was very vivid. When I had a history test in his class, I didn't have to study much. I would remember every word that he had said. I would see him doing the actions that went along with his stories. He was very animated. He would shout out orders as if he was a general, or he would speak softly and reverently when describing the death of a great hero. The most important thing that I learned from Mr. Alban was that I did really like history. I just thought that I didn't like it because most people had made it dull by just reading from the textbooks. History is not just a series of dates and dull facts. History is what really happened. History is real life. All the historical figures had real families and emotions. They weren't just fictional people. After I took history from Mr. Alban, I realized that I really did have an interest in it. He was my favorite teacher, and I will always be grateful to him for making me aware of just how interesting history really is. Weather Sometimes I watch the weatherman on television. It is fascinating to watch him point to different areas of the country on the map. He tells us where the weather will be nice and where it will be bad. The weatherman is not always right. Weather reporting is not an exact science. Nothing is very exact when it comes to the weather. The weather department does a lot of research, but they can never be sure of exactly what will happen. Sometimes it looks like it will be clear, but the wind changes direction and clouds move in. The weathermen can warn people if there is a chance of a hurricane or tornado. The weathermen can also warn people of floods. Sometimes entire towns have to be evacuated because of bad weather. It is important to be aware of the weather. For example, it is not good to be caught in the middle of a field when there is going to be a thunderstorm. You might want to take extra precautions if there is going to be a heavy snowstorm. You would need to be in a secure place if a hurricane or tornado was predicted. You might want to cancel a picnic if you knew that it would rain that day. The weather affects us in so many ways. Some people are really affected by dull, cloudy days. If there are no sunny days, they become very depressed. Heavy air pressure can cause some people to have headaches. Weather affects all of us in one way or another. It is always a topic of conversation. People often say things like, Hello, it's a beautiful day today. Often we plan our lives and activities around the weather. So if you are planning on walking home tonight, keep an eye on the sky. Are those rain clouds up there? You might need an umbrella. Video designed by English7Levels.com how to avoid catching a cold How many colds do you catch in a year? Most of my friends catch quite a few colds. They cough, sniffle, and sneeze. They carry around tissues and blow their noses all the time. Their eyes water and they have scratchy throats. 
I don't get many colds. In fact, I can go for a whole year and never catch a cold. This is why I consider myself an expert on how not to catch a cold. I'll tell you how to avoid catching a cold. I think that you need to take a lot of vitamin C. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. I drink fruit juice too. I also take vitamin C pills. Whenever I begin to feel a cold coming on, I make sure that I have taken my vitamin C pill and I drink a lot of orange juice. That usually knocks the cold right out of my system. I make sure that I get a lot of fresh air. In the winter, a lot of buildings are shut up tight so that the air is stale and people's germs circulate through the buildings. I get outside and breathe in fresh, clean air. If somebody is rude enough to cough or sneeze right in front of me without covering his or her mouth, I just hold my breath for a second. I'm not sure if this works or not, but I don't want to breathe in anybody's cold germs. Many germs are passed through hands. It is important to wash your hands thoroughly if you touch anything in a public place. If I hold a banister while I'm walking down the stairs, I think of all the people who have used that banister, and I make sure that I wash my hands before I eat. Doorknobs also have a lot of germs on them. Money is another thing that is passed from hand to hand and is covered with germs. Sometimes I see people stick money into their mouths. Just think of all the germs that you would be putting into your mouth if you did that. If you just give it a little bit of thought, you can avoid a lot of germs that cause colds. If you eat good food and stay fit, your body will be able to fight off the germs that causes colds and other diseases. It is not always possible to avoid colds, but if you do catch a cold, drink plenty of fluids and get a lot of rest. The future. I sometimes wonder what life will be like in the future. Life has changed so much in just the past few years. I'm sure that there are still big changes that are coming. Do you think we'll still drive cars? Maybe we'll get into computerized vehicles that we won't have to drive. We'll just push a few buttons, and the vehicles will take us to wherever we have to go. Maybe there won't be roads. We might just fly through space to get where we want to go. Instead of telephones, we'll just use our computers. We'll be able to see each other when we talk. That type of thing is already happening. Maybe we won't have to cook our meals. We might be able to push buttons to order whatever we want. A nice roast beef dinner or an ice cream sundae might just pop out of a machine. It would be nice to have a robot to clean the house for you. In the past few years, computers have been extremely important. People used to write to each other through the mail. Now people communicate so much more frequently through email. Most of my friends own computers. If we had all of these things to do the work for us, what would we do? We would still need people to program the computers. We could spend more time being creative rather than doing everyday chores. The future holds many surprises. I'm sure that technology will become even more and more amazing. When my parents were young, they had never even seen a color television. Nobody owned a computer. It doesn't take long for things to change a lot. Who knows what amazing things are in store for us? Giving a speech. I had to give a speech last week. I gave a speech to 300 people. I had to speak in front of a group of students. I had to tell them about a campaign that we were having to raise money for cancer research. Giving a speech can be a difficult thing. When you stand in front of a big crowd, you can get very nervous. Some people feel like they have weak knees. Their legs feel as if they are made of rubber. Their heart beats very hard inside of their chest. Their palms get sweaty. Some people even become short of breath. For some people, giving a speech is their worst fear. When you give a speech, everyone is looking at you. They are waiting to hear what you have to say. When you have 300 people looking at you, you have 600 eyes that are on you. It is a little frightening when you think of it that way. Before I give a speech, I take three big breaths. I calm myself and I remind myself that what I have to say is important. I like to be sure of what I am going to say, so I practice my speech in front of a mirror at home. I like to look like I am relaxed and friendly. They say that practice makes perfect. So the more speeches that you give, the better you will become at it. Whenever I have to give a speech, I imagine that the audience is just one big person. I look out into the audience until I find a friendly, smiling face. I focus on that person and I pretend that I am just talking to them. I have become used to giving speeches. I am more relaxed now than I used to be. People tell me that I do not look nervous at all. I like to hear that. Sometimes I do feel a little flutter of nervousness, but I just ignore it and do the best that I can. Giving a speech is not as scary as it appears to be. Anyone can do it with a little practice. Moving to another country. 
My friend Steve moved to another country. He had lived in Canada all his life, and he moved to Japan. Life in Japan was very different for Steve than what he was used to. At first, Steve suffered from culture shock. His whole life seemed different. He was not used to the way of life in Japan. Steve was not used to the large crowds of people that walked up and down the streets in Japan. In his hometown in Canada, the streets were fairly quiet. Steve had to get used to the food. In Japan, the people eat a lot of fish. Steve had never eaten much fish before. Steve wanted pizza, but it was expensive in Japan. Steve said that he had to adjust his eating habits. The people in Japan have different customs than we do here in Canada. Steve didn't want to offend anyone, so he had to learn the customs. He had to learn about what Japanese people considered polite and rude. Sometimes, in a foreign country, you can do something to insult someone without even realizing that you are being rude. At first, Steve had trouble with the language. He said that the only way to really learn the language is to talk to people. Steve talked to a lot of people. He made a lot of mistakes, but people were patient with him, and they tried to help him with his Japanese. It wasn't long before Steve felt more comfortable in his new surroundings. You have to be willing to learn new customs and a new language if you move to another country. Steve feels very comfortable in Japan and in Canada now. He is thinking about going to another country now. He thinks that he might like to try and live in Italy. I'm sure that he would get over his culture shock very fast if he moved there. Moving to a new country can be difficult, but if you are willing to learn, it can be a very rewarding experience. Look for the beauty. I have learned that things don't always go the way that they were planned. If something doesn't happen the way that I want it to, I try to make the best of the situation. I always try to find something good in everything that happens. Last year, I broke my ankle when I was walking on an icy sidewalk. At first, I was very upset. I was missing school, and there was a party that I wanted to go to. I couldn't do very much of anything. My ankle was very sore. I stayed home and I read a book. It was an excellent book and one that I probably would not have had time to read under normal circumstances. My friends brought my homework to my house, and we had some really nice visits while they were here. I had to accept the fact that I couldn't go anywhere on my broken ankle, so I made the best of a bad situation. Once I lost my way when I was out camping. I ended up in a very large field. I was afraid that nobody would find me, but I calmed myself down and took time to examine all the interesting wild flowers in the field. My family did find me. They were surprised at how calm I was. I have learned that there is something valuable inside every adventure and something beautiful inside every person. We had a new boy who came into our class. His clothes weren't in style, and he was not particularly handsome. Some of the boys and girls made fun of him. Sometimes people can be really cruel. He seemed to handle it all right, but inside, I knew that it must hurt. Some of my friends and I invited him out with us. We found out that he had a terrific sense of humor, and he is probably one of the nicest people that I have ever met. He has since become one of my best friends. It makes me ashamed when someone that I know judges someone by how they look. It isn't fair to do that. You'll find that something good comes out of almost every situation. You'll find something good about almost everyone that you meet if you look hard enough. If something doesn't work out the way you planned it, just make the best of the situation. Look for the beauty in everything. My doll. When I was an infant, I got a rag doll. It was a very plain little doll, and it wore a clown outfit and a clown's hat. I used to take that doll to bed with me every night. I couldn't go to bed without my doll. My mother used to pretend that the doll was talking to me. She would make the doll dance and sing songs. I would talk to the doll. My mother would answer for the doll, but I was a baby, and I thought that the doll was actually talking to me. That doll was my best friend. I took her everywhere. One time, I took her to a store with me, and I left her on a shelf in the store. We were halfway home when I realized that I didn't have my doll with me. I was very upset. My mother and I rushed back to the store. My doll was still there. I was so relieved. I hugged my doll and I promised myself that I would never leave her anywhere again. I couldn't imagine life without that doll. Through the years, the doll became less important in my life. I had other things to do, but the doll still sat on my bed during the day, and I still took it to bed at night. I gave that doll a lot of love when I was little. In fact, I love that doll so much that she looks tattered and torn now. There are parts of her face and hands that are almost worn away. I had a lot of other toys when I was little, but none of them were ever so important as that doll. I don't play with toys anymore, but that doll is still in my room. 
She sits in a special chair in the corner. I'll always have that doll. No matter how worn out she is, I'll always keep her and cherish her as part of my early childhood. I am curious. I am curious about many things. I would like to find the answers to a lot of questions that I have. What holds the stars up in the sky? Why does ice form on the top of the lake when it is cold? Is there life on other planets? Why do we not fall off the face of the earth? How do caterpillars turn into butterflies? All of these things are mysteries to me. There are so many questions that are unanswered. I think I should go to the library and get a book to find out why people grow old. What makes a television work? I also want to know where electricity comes from. Who is the strongest person in the world? Who is the smartest person in the world? Why do some people have blonde hair and some people have black hair? Why do people in different countries speak different languages? Why do people have to die? Why are no two snowflakes alike? What makes people fall in love? What makes the rivers run? Why does the sun rise every morning? How did the oceans form? Why did the dinosaurs vanish from the earth? I wonder if I'll ever find out the answers to all of my questions. I think I'll have to study hard and stay in school to find out everything that I want to know. Some questions never get answered. It is good to be curious. People who are curious about things are the ones who learn a lot, and some curious people go on to invent things and make important discoveries. Creative people. Some people are just born to create. That's what I think. Some people just have the need to write stories, compose beautiful music, or paint pictures. Creativity seems to be inside them, and they need to let it out. It's good that we have people like that. Composers like Mozart and Chopin have given us music that is incredibly beautiful. It's not just the classical composers who have given us great pieces of music. There are modern composers who have written great songs also. Elton John is an example of someone who has composed many wonderful songs. Andrew Lloyd Webber has given us some very popular musicals like Cats and The Phantom of the Opera. There are so many talented and creative people in this world. When you visit an art gallery, you marvel at how artists are able to recreate realism or make up something that seems totally unreal yet beautiful. The American artist Norman Rockwell painted some pictures that actually look like photographs. He tried to portray life as it was in America. Through his paintings, one can get a good sense of American life through the years. On the other hand, artists like Jackson Pollock did not portray realism. Jackson Pollock painted abstract pictures. His paintings are just as good as Norman Rockwell's, but they are entirely different. Some books that we read are classics. Mark Twain portrayed American life through his characters Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. Charles Dickens brought Victorian England to life through his books. Most people are familiar with his Christmas Carol, where the mean and miserable Scrooge learns the true meaning of Christmas. People don't have to read the classics. There are modern writers who entertain readers through their stories. Stephen King has written a number of horror stories. Some of his books have even been made into movies. We are lucky to have creative people who share their gifts with us. If you are lucky enough to be creative, you should use your talents to create works of art that we all can share.